goes by the name of Mr. Calvin Hutchins. Welcome to the show. Welcome everybody to season eight of the Lavish Show. I'm your host, Dr. Shara Stallworth, and today I am here with one of my friends, Sensei David Wilson of I wash him Kai Jiu Jitsu. All right, he is the number one man on the coast for the community to get your health back in shape and he's for our veterans so stay tuned and sit back and relax to watch the lavish show but don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel shower stalwart and visit my website creativewomenenterprise.com everybody back to the lavish show i have my special guest sensei david wilson at hawashinka jiu-jitsu dojo how are you i'm doing great 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 and as you can see um the footage of the dojo this guy is very special in the community and i want him to tell the audience a little bit about himself and how this great vision started so tell the audience who you are as you said, my name is Dave Wilson. I'm an Air Force veteran out of Keesler. And in 1992, I had a near life-ending motorcycle accident. And um, it took me a long time, about 10 years of rehabilitation, before I was even able to get much out of bed. And uh, after I was married and my wife and I started taking jujitsu, I found that it was extremely helpful for me for my own personal rehabilitation. It gave me strength back, it gave me balance, it gave me a sense of purpose. And so I studied for 13 years in Baton Rouge. Wow. And so when my wife, whose parents lived in this area, was able to get a job back here, we moved here in December of 2013. And I began teaching for donations at various locations around the area. Okay. I taught at Gulf Coast Judo for two years. I taught at Body Quest in Gaucher, and I taught next to McNarves, the gaming store. Because of the fact that I didn't want to have a commercial setting where we would constantly be fighting to try to make enough money to pay the rent, mm -hmm. it meant that we were limited on venue. Okay. So when the last place next to McNarves was condemned, basically because it had holes in the roof and water would pour in. Mm -hmm. I was forced to teach out of my garage for over a year. And my wife said, we have three and a third acres here in Van Cleef. Why not build a building so that you can teach out of it? It can be your forever home. Wow. Okay. So that we started in 2019. We broke ground. We started building. And it's been a trial getting the building put up. That's a subject of a completely another uh, interview. But <laughs> During the process, um, Randy Bosarge, our supervisor for District 5, suggested that it would make our job easier if we were a certified nonprofit. Okay. So, with the help of my treasurer, who is a disabled veteran, one of my students in Baton Rouge, a CPA, we incorporated in August of 2019 and we received our determination letter with the help of. Uh, Congressman Plotso's office okay. in December mm -hmm. of 2019. So we have an official 501c3 status. Our mission is to teach other disabled vets, special needs kids and adults, and law enforcement officers. That's excellent. So let's go back to the accident, yeah. you know, and all of that that took place. Yeah. Um, were you able to physically do anything? How long were you, you know, down and you know right. going so, on with the issue so my left knee was completely 
destroyed. It was bone on bone for 10 years. So I could not walk without a cane. Okay. And it was horrible. I had to medicate before I went anywhere, went yeah. shopping or anything. So most of the time I just stayed put. I didn't do anything. And I got up to almost 300 pounds. Wow. And so when I fell in love with jujitsu, we had classes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. And I found that if I did all three classes, I couldn't physically walk uh -huh. on Tuesday and Thursday. I literally couldn't leave the bed. My knee wouldn't support my weight. And I had a one-year-old son mm -hmm. that I was a stay-at-home dad for. And that wasn't going to work because he was very active. Yeah. So I was, I was forced to stop attending all three days. I could only go on Monday and Friday. Mm -hmm. And that was so torturous to me that I would miss out on that one day of classes. Yeah. Week that I decided to go ahead and have my knee replaced at 33 years old. Oh, wow. So when I did that, and after I rehabilitated from that surgery, it was like a whole new life plan. Oh, okay. And I was able to get out on the mat, and four years later, I had my black belt, and two years after that, my second degree black belt. So, you know, there's no excuses with you. I know that from joining with my children. You know, there's no excuses. Like you said, you know, you had the knee replacement, a terrible accident and you persevered you know basically and had this great vision of what's going on here at the dojo um tell us a little bit about your students okay so i have through the years here because i have some students who still consider themselves students even though they don't come to class so much anymore <laughs> But I've had students uh, all the way from six years old to 73 years old. I've had former Marines, I've had firefighters, I've had uh, uh, Army Special Forces, I've had uh, police officers, and then just run-of-the-mill people that want right. to learn self-defense, they want to learn a cool martial art, throw people through the air, and learn okay. how to fall safely. All right. Well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to learn more about this dojo in Van Cleve, Mississippi. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Leah Trevelyan Rollins at the Mosaic Performing Arts School. I would like to invite you all to watch our Facebook Live on May the 26th. That's a Thursday evening at 6.30 Central Standard Time. Our students will be featured at my Positive Vibes by Leah broadcast on the Mosaic Handshaw site at 1518 Market Street. Come and check that out. That would be really, really great. Again, on Facebook Live, May the 26th at 630. Hey, this is Shara from The Lavish Show. If you would like to be our guest, advertise your business, or even run your commercial, please contact us at creativewomenenterprises at gmail.com. We would love to showcase what you do to the world. We even have sponsorship packages available. So please contact us today at creativewomenenterprises at gmail.com. We're sitting with Sensei David Wilson here in Van Cleve, Mississippi at his wonderful dojo. Um, the next thing I want to ask you is about your classes, the schedule, and the type of martial arts you teach. I know uh, raising my children, they did a keto for years, you know, and jujitsu is sort of seems like the same, but it's not quite the same. I know taking your um, classes, we did a lot of kicking, throwing, and things like that. Could you break down the format of your class for us and, you know, uh, who do you mostly, I don't want to say cater to, but who do you help, you know, as far as veterans and things like that? Sure. Okay. So, jiu-jitsu is the traditional martial art developed by the samurai that they could use on the battlefield to stay alive. Right. And so, it involves locking up of joints, throws, sweeps, um, chokes, strikes. And it, it has something for every range, whether you're at long range, short range, whether you're grappling on the ground. Um, one of the differences between what we do and some other martial arts mm -hmm. is self-defense is actually integral to what we do because we practice our techniques against real world attacks. Okay. Because if you never practice against a punch, then when someone punches you, you'll be completely incapable of defending against it. If you don't practice against someone tackling you, if you don't practice against somebody coming up with a stick and going to hit you with it, then the first time that happens, you're going to be unprepared. Right. So all of our techniques are done against real world attacks. And not only that, but we make sure that we get some 
our form of sparring every single class. Okay. So that the first time somebody comes at you in the real world and wants to hurt you, wants to rob you, wants to kill you, wants to assault you, it's nothing new. You've been grabbed, you've been tackled, you've right. been punched at. Many, many times they're, you're going to find they're flying through the air, yeah. on their belly, rolled over, before you even realize they want to hit you. Wow, and um, I'm thinking that, you know, you also teach about like the pressure points and different things of that nature for self-defense. So, yes, um, pressure points come under the general understanding of pain compliance. If you can put pain on a person, you can get them hopefully to stop attacking you, but the problem is pain is a very poor motivator for a lot of attackers. Okay. We have a lot of evidence of people who get shot they continue fighting and they don't even realize they've been shot <laughs> that's so on true the that's and then true they say you know we're going to take care of this broken arm you have or this gunshot and they're like what are you talking about uh -huh. and then they look over and their arm is back here right so um pain is a useful motivator but you cannot depend upon it to shut down an attack right so when we teach any pain compliance move whether it's a, a pressure point whether it's a joint lock it's always with the understanding that we are shutting down their mechanical ability to continue fighting. Okay. We're putting their body in an angle where they can't fight past it to get at it. Right. And um, coming from Louisiana, pain compliance is what we used to call lanyard. Okay, uh, yeah. It's that yeah. little bit of extra something. It's that gravy <laughs> on top of whatever else you got working. Okay, um, so you're a veteran yourself. I, I love am. my veterans. Um, if someone wanted to come and join, you know, what could they look for as far as being a veteran that had some things happen to them in their life in the past? How Do you offer any type of advice, counsel, anything, you know, to get them motivated, right. you know? So one of the things that is unique to the veteran experience is for the most part, if you're in the military, you had to undergo a series of mental outlook changes in order to stay alive in dangerous situations. Yes. And when you leave the military, those don't go away. They don't spend any real time transitioning you back to being a civilian. Mm -hmm. They expect that one day you're out there having to scan for IEDs while you're driving down the road. Right. And then the next day you're here. You're here. And, mm -hmm. and every single thing you see on the road could be something that's going to blow you up. So veterans have a lot on their plate that they're dealing with. Yeah. One of the great things about martial arts and jiu-jitsu especially is that it allows you to encounter stress against somebody that's trying to shut you down uh -huh. in a completely safe environment. There's, you don't have to worry about them literally trying to kill you. <laughs> So you can get out there and you can be rolling around, you can get choked unconscious, and all it takes is a tap. That's and right. Up. Okay. Um, so what age group do you teach? You probably mentioned it before, but yeah. let our audience know the ages and your schedule, okay. you know, and how to get in contact with you. Right. Let our audience know that. So we have just added a kids class from ages 5 to 12, and that goes from 5.30 to 6.30 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then our adult classes are Tuesday and Thursday from 6.30 to 8.30 and Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. Yeah. We have a Facebook presence where you can look for Hi Wash and Kai and it should pop up on there. Um, I assume you can put a placard up or if you put my business Yeah, card. I sure will. Okay. I want to tell all this how we met. I was doing Toys for Tots last year and he had one of our boxes where people can donate toys to. And when I walked in the dojo, I was like, oh my goodness, this is the real deal. You know, I was like, I gotta bring my children. This just seems very effective in the community. And I wanted to know who you were. And you responded so quickly to me. And I thank you for that. And um, people need to know about your dojo. And like you said, you only take donations, that's, right. it. that's and it. You're not charging a high rate, it's for the community. So I want everybody to tune in to, you know, Look this up. It's on Facebook. Come visit in Van Cleef. You're seeing the sensei himself. And we're going to get into some action in a little <laughs> bit so you can see what he can do, right? Okay. So is there anything you want to say to our viewers? Mm. Anything else? No. Um, I'd love for you to come out and check out the dojo. Come to a class. If for nothing else, just come and watch. It's entertaining. Yes. Yes. And you may be like me. The first class I went to, I went because my wife was attending. Oh. And I thought this was something I was never going to be able to do. 
And I watched, and I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. That's right. And I did it, and 20 years later, I'm Here still doing Here we go. It. Yes. Well, I thank you so much for being on The Lavish Show. Yep. And I'll be back. I'll be taking some more classes because I need my vibing and all that going <laughs> on. All right. So stay tuned. We'll be back for more of The Lavish Show. Welcome back, everybody, to The Lavish Show. I'm here with Sensei David Wilson of the dojo and some of his senior students. I even wore my biker jacket because he used to ride motorcycles. So he's here to flex his muscles for us today. And his students will show us some techniques of the martial arts culture of jiu-jitsu. Okay, we're here with one of the senior students at Hawashinka Jiu-Jitsu Japanese class, and his name is James. So, welcome, James, to the Lavish Show. So, tell our viewers, you know, how long have you been taking this class here? So, I've been taking uh, Jiu-Jitsu here at this facility for about two years now. Um, and you like it? it I, I enjoy it, other than having actual useful applications. Uh, it's one of the rare circumstances where adults can turn their phone off <laughs> and I focus on me mentally, physically, emotionally. So Right. So what are some of the things that you learn here? 
So um, other than just staying in better shape, uh, flexibility wise, strength wise, um, it's a confidence builder. Uh, it does help self-defense application purposes. Right. Um, and overall, uh, get to be by myself as a grown up <laughs> and do my own thing. Right. You have thrown me around a couple of times, my <laughs> children too. So in uh, your belt, let's talk about this green belt. So um, what does that mean when you get to the green belt? What so, can you do? Um, green belt comes after orange, so it goes white, yellow, orange, green. Okay. So at this point, I'm definitely still learning. Um, as a green belt, I know most of the ground technique work. Okay, um, so going around, hurting people. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, James. Thank you. From my block to your block, we are here to stay. Jesus all day, every day we pray for change to come. He's the only way, way to escape the pains of yesterday. From my block to your block, we are here to stay. Jesus all day, every day we pray for change to come. He's the only way, way to escape the pains of yesterday. As I look out of my window, see babies on the corner selling their dope, trying to make another donor out of a man being deprived of a need. Could only be self expressed when he follows his. Chase paper trail like it's good until everything else fails. The real message is to follow Yeshua. Give him your life and he will.